A Mortgage Coach Community, Dave Savage here, and today I am sitting down virtually with Steve Harney, the founder of Keeping Current Matters. Um, Steve, I guess, are, are you officially retired? Is that how I should introduce you as a retired I'm, founder? I'm still not even sure yet. Bill, Bill bought the company from me. My son Bill bought the company from me, and I'm still doing some work, some research for them. Uh, I'm putting in quite a few hours. I don't know if I'm I'm technically retired, but I'm doing it in my pajamas from my lake house in North Carolina, looking out, counting the, the birds every day. So I guess it's kind of like a retirement. Well, congratulations on your lifestyle and uh, su super grateful for you taking time out of bird counting to come in and uh, help the mortgage coach community. So let me set the table here. In our Facebook group, Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind, we've got a couple thousand mortgage professionals that that just are always asking questions, sharing scripts, sharing ideas, helping each other. And there's been a number of people ask questions around, hey, I'm having clients asking me about, you know, do we have a housing bubble? You know, what do I think is going to happen with real estate values in the near term and long term? And I, I figured I am not qualified to even begin to answer that question, but there's no one more qualified than Steve Harney. And I'm sure you've got some great slides to walk us through. And, and just help, you know, my goal is that a mortgage professional is a leader to both the family and the agent. So Steve, if you don't mind just walking us through some slides, some Keeping Current Matters insights and, you know, yeah. enlightening us there. All right, first off, you know, we get that question a lot even from the mortgage professionals we deal with and the agents we deal with. You know, Steve, is there a housing bubble? Is that what that, this is all about? And what I'd like to explain to him is, no, you know, there was a housing bubble the last time, not this time. So what I want to do is share a couple of quotes from some people on that regard. Uh, Rick Sharga, the executive vice president of 10X, we're definitely not in a bubble. And by the way, David, you know, I try to keep current and everything. Each of these quotes are within the last 60 days. All right. From Christopher Thornburg from Beaking Economics. There is no direct or indirect sign of any kind of bubble. From Matthew Gardner, the Windermere chief economist, is it a bubble? No. And from Bing Bay and Edward Golding from Urban Institute, we are not in a bubble and nowhere near the situation preceding the uh, 2008 housing crisis. So I want everyone to understand that it's not me saying we're not in a bubble. It's every expert I know is saying we're not in a bubble. I gave you four examples. Now that I've done that, I want to let you know that those quotes are absolutely useless. All right? Because I want you to know that's the truth. But when you use quotes, what a lot of buyers, what a lot of agents will say to you is, yeah, but that's what we were saying back in 2008. There's no bubble. There's no bubble. So when you use the quotes by themselves without backing it up, you know, I, I'm not sure how, how they help you. So I just put these four quotes on this right now, David to make sure that people realize it's not me just saying that. Now, let's give you some proof positive. Understand there were three causes of the 2008 housing bubble. Number one was lax lending standards. We all know anyone could get a mortgage back then. You know, dogs got mortgages, and that's true. Number two, there was ra rabid speculation. It was, it was crazy what people were doing. They were refinancing a house to buy two and three houses. They didn't even know what to do with it. They weren't good investors. They weren't sure what was happening. And number, two, uh, number three, there was a rapidly rising real estate prices. So let's take a look at those three things and see how that applies to now. The lax lending standards where we would give any amount of money to any buyer for any house, well, that changed. But the reason people are starting to question it again even though we all know that lending standards are still tight and maybe still too tight, if we take a look at the Mortgage Credit Availability Index from the Mortgage Credit Available uh, from the uh, Mortgage Bank Association, what we can see is credit has been getting easier each and every month over the last five years. So as new programs come out, when a new three percent program comes out, when they talk about making mortgages more affordable for more people. What some people hear, they hear that, uh-oh, here we go again. So you have to take a look at this and realize, yes, availability, and you should be preaching that as a mortgage uh, professional. Hey, listen, don't be afraid to apply for a mortgage. You, you know, many people can get a mortgage, many more people can get a mortgage than think they can get a mortgage. 
but you also have to back it up with this slide. If we take a look at the blue slide we just showed you, that's in the bottom right-hand corner, the blue slide right there. But now, if we back it up to June 2004 through June 2008, we can see the higher, just so you know, the higher the graph, the easier it was to get a mortgage. So, so it's gotten easier over the last couple of years. We're nowhere near where it was back in 2004 through 2008. So it's important that people see, they hear about that first graph. It's important that you put it in context. Yes, it is getting easier, but it's nowhere near that easy or where it was back in 2008. Hey, Steve, real quick. Uh, so first of all, everybody, if you have questions for Steve, you're, you're watching this either in our YouTube channel or our Facebook channel, ask questions. We, we want to help you. Uh, deliver value and insight to realtors and to, to families and borrowers. I know a lot of people are going to be asking for these slides. Are you okay if, you know, obviously we're recording this so they can see it, but can we also give them a link to the slides? Uh, actually, I sent the, I sent you the slide package yesterday, David. So if you look in your email, they're there. If for some reason I screwed that up and didn't get them to you, let me know. Uh, I no, sent no, I, I got them. I just wanted to make sure I had your permission to, you know, give everybody a link to those. That's all. I have, I have the slides. Yeah. So, David, the, the one thing I want you to be very sure of, I love the work you're doing to really educate the mortgage professionals. Mortgage Coach does a phenomenal job. It helps the mortgage professionals I deal with, but maybe even more importantly, it helps all the agents I deal with. You know, the best thing for the consumer is to have a great agent and a great mortgage professional working together. And you've done yeoman's work, yeoman's work over your career to make sure that those mortgage professionals are educated, can't talk to a consumer very intelligently, very articulately, and you, and you know exactly what's there. So anytime you see anything we have, please feel free to share it with your people. I don't give that open access to anyone else, but with you, you've earned that access. Well, thank you so much. And the Mortgage Coach community appreciates it. So folks, if you're watching this in YouTube, if you look down below in the description of this video, there will be a link to see the slides. Uh, we'll put these in SlideShare and we will make them available to our mortgage coach community. Thanks, Steve. Hey, I'll let you keep rolling. I just know that uh, we are gonna get a lot of ask for that and I wanted to make sure I had the permission. Sure, did, did, did never have to ask again, David. That's, that's just, it, it's baked into the pie already. All right, so Thank now you. let's go to the second thing, you know, speculation. And, and we've had some experience with speculation over the last several months with the Bitcoin situation where Bitcoin and wherever you stand with Bitcoin, over the last couple of months, it got crazy. And that's because people were doing nutty things in order just to buy Bitcoins. That type of speculation will drive a market and that could cause volatility. We had that back in 2005 in the real estate market. And here's a quote from Bill McBride of Calculated Risk, uh, an economist that I follow, I've been following for decades. Back in April 2005, he said this, a bubble requires both overvaluation based on fundamentals and speculation. It is natural to focus on an asset's fundamental value, but the real key for detecting a bubble is speculation. Speculation tends to chase appreciating assets and then speculation begets more speculation until finally, for some reason that will become obvious to all in hindsight, the bubble burst. That was Bill McBride calling the bubble in April of 2005, before anyone else I know did, he called it. Now let's take a look at what Bill McBride is saying today. In 2005, people were just buying homes and letting them sit vacant and then selling without significant improvements, classic speculation. And even more dangerous during the bubble was the excessive use of leverage, all those poor quality loans, which we've already talked about. Currently, lending standards are decent and loan quality is excellent. So prices might be a little overvalued, but there is little speculation. And I wouldn't call house prices a bubble. And I don't expect house prices to decline nationally like during the bust. So the person who called the bubble and bust in 2005, that same person is saying, we are not there right now. So it's important that if somebody says to you, well, what did the, what was the, the expert saying back in 2005? Say, well, here's one expert that called it in 2005. And this is what he's saying about the market now.
But as you already know, at KCM, we like to really back everything up uh, with you know, data itself. In 2005, almost one out of four, almost one out of four homes were bought on speculation. That number has dropped dramatically in 2017 to more normal numbers. So it's important that we realize the lending standards that were available back then aren't available now, the number one reason. The number two reason, the fact that there was a massive speculation back then, that's not the case now. Now let's go for the third reason, rapidly rising real estate prices. Now people, the main reason people are afraid right now, David, is they, they are saying, well, we do have rapidly rising real estate prices like we did then. And they're not wrong, but they're not the same as back then. So I'll give you an example, a couple of examples on this. Number one is here's the house appreciation in the United States, annual percentage change, the four years leading up to the bubble in 2005 going into 2006. And we can see that in three of those four years, there was double digit appreciation. And the last, uh, and the, uh, the fourth year, there was almost double digit appreciation. Now let's take a look at the last four years leading us to where we are today. Nowhere near, near those numbers. Not even close, actually. As a matter of fact, if we average the four years together, we can see between 2002 and 2005, we did have almost 11% annual appreciation during those years. The last four years, we're a little bit more than half that at 5.93%. So when we're talking about it, I want you to understand that, yes, prices are going up rapidly, but nowhere near where they were going up at the last bubble. As a matter of fact, just yesterday, a day before we're recording this, all right, Zillow said this, if the housing bubble and bust had not happened and home values had instead appreciated at a steady pace, the median home value would be higher than it is current, than its current value. All right, well, what, 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 what did they just say? Well, let's give it to you again in graph form because I think that's what's important. Here are the actual prices from 2000 through 2017. And if a person looks at this, whatever graph they make of it, they're going to say, wait a second, this is a roller coaster. It went up, it came down, it's going back up, it's higher than what it was, now it's going to come back down again. I can see them logically or visually seeing that roller coaster and saying, hey, listen, we're about for another fall. But let's look at it a little bit differently. Let's assume we put the actual price that was in 2000 and we added 3.6% depreciation each year. Where did I come up with 3.6%? Before the housing boom and bust, historically, for decades, the average annual appreciation was 3.6%. So if we started the, where our value was at 2000 and we had 3.6% each year, let's take a look at where we'd be today. So what we're looking at now is the blue represents where we would be if there was just normal appreciation. And the tan lines are where we actually are. So again, what Zillow said, what a lot of headlines you'll see, we haven't even reached 2006 prices. They're not wrong. Because what they're doing is they're saying, what would be the price if we went ahead and gave it the normal appreciation? All right. Uh, so really, where are we right now? Basically, exactly where we should be. Now, do I think that this year, we might, that, that tan line might be a little higher than the blue line? Yes, I think we're getting close to that. But it's not going to be much higher. We're going to be in a very, very solid place right now. Now, you, David, you asked me right from the beginning, where are we going from here? Just this morning, the Home Price Expectation Survey came out. This is a quarterly survey. It's a nationwide panel of over 100 economists, real estate experts, and investment and market strategists. They project every quarter where prices are going to be over the next five years. And where they are in the next five years, this is what that panel of over 100 are saying. We're going to still have good appreciation this year. Forget about the tax code. Forget about it, all the – basically on price, what they're looking at is Demand is increasing, and it is increasing right now, while supply is still real low. Anything you're selling, if demand is high and prices are low, uh, and supply is low, prices will go up.
Now, what do they think? They think that's going to level out. They do think we're going to get more inventory. Builders are going to build more houses. More homeowners are going to move because the economy is better for them and they have more equity in their home. And then we're going to go back to maybe a little bit more normal appreciation in 2020, 21, and 22. Now, it's very important that when you're explaining it, even to an agent, because they sometimes get confused, but definitely to um, a consumer, the fact that these numbers are going down doesn't mean prices are going down. This is telling you that the level of appreciation, how much they're going up, will slow down. So even in 2020, we're not losing value, we're gaining 3% that year, according to the experts. What the consumer is worried about are any of those bars red? Does, is anyone projecting we're going to actually, if I buy a house, it's going to be worth less than it was? And again, 100 experts, the best survey I've seen, they're saying, no, that's not the case. And for a little bit more proof, and I like to give it to you in very strong visuals because I know the agents love that. I know the consumer loves that. Oh, by the way, I just wanted to show you that with the tax situation, I forgot to put this slide back in. Here is this, this is what they projected last quarter, well, quarter of 2017 before the tax bill was put into place and what they're projecting now. Very little difference, ladies and gentlemen, because they know price is about supply and demand, not about anything else. Now, I wanted to give you this also. This is the average probability of home price declines by state that's put out by Arch Financial. They did a study and said, well, you know, where are in the country do we have a high, moderate, a low, or a minimal probability of home price declines? Well, we can see that the vast majority of the country is dark, dark blue. The vast majority of the country. That means there's a minimal chance probability of prices are going to go down. There are three states, a lot of states are medium blue. There are three states that are light blue, North Dakota, Wyoming, and Alaska. That's got to do more with the their energy economy than it does about anything else. So they have a low, it's still, oh, I'm sorry, a moderate, it's still just a moderate probability, but it's only three states. What state has a high probability that they'll be see price declines? None, not one. So with the, the information I just gave you and the explanations I just gave you, if someone's talking to you about housing bubble and that prices might fall like they did back a decade ago, you have enough proof right in front of you now to go over them. But I want to give you one more special gift. Because instead of you handling the, the problem that's in front of you right now, I'm going to give you an answer to a problem you're about to get. Because the next thing that people are worried about is if rates are rising, that means prices have to fall. Now, the more rates rise and the more people become familiar with the rates are rising, the more this question is going to be asked of you. So I want you to see something because people will say if interest rates are going up, that means less people can qualify for a mortgage. That means there'll be less people buying and that means prices are going to come down. No, actually short term when interest rates go up, it increases demand because people jump off the fence and try to get the lower rate. But again, me saying that, they could say, well, you're just saying that because you're trying to make a deal. You're trying to get a mortgage. Let's prove it. Here are notable times mortgage rate, notable mortgage rate increases. Pretty dramatic increases. Let's take a look at each time, each time, what happened to house prices. In each period of time, house prices increased. At no time did they decrease. And in most cases, they increased substantially. Again, why is that? Because a rise in interest rates forces more demand to the market, not less demand. And that demand is what causes prices to go up. Now, the last time, and you know, Freddie Mac is projecting we're going to go up about 1% this year, and a lot of people are talking about we're going to tickle 5% by the end of the year. That would be a 1% increase since the beginning of the year. Well, the last time that happened was January, two, I'm sorry, January 2013 to January 2014. Interest rates went up one percentage point. What happened to prices that year? They went up 9.8%. So keep this in your pocket, on your smartphone, in your portfolio, on your computer, because this is the next big question that people are going to start asking you. Wait a second. If rates are going up, 
I got to back up because prices will fall. Everyone believes that's to be the truth and history has proven that's not the case. That's everything I got, David. I hope that's enough for the help of the people. Wow. So, so folks, I mean, this was a master class in 2018, you know, towards the end of February, what Steve Harney believes is going to happen with rates and he backed it up with a lot of facts, stats, and visual graphs. So I know in the mortgage coach community, everybody believes that every single family deserves to take, you know, whatever they believe, what do they think rates are going to do? What do they think values are going to do based off of their unique marketplace and based off of their unique price range and give that family a total cost analysis. So my hope is that you're, you're getting smart on this to the point where you can have this conversation with the families and the realtors that you serve. And my hope is that you have a move up analysis already prepared, ready to help you when you're having that conversation with an agent, um, a first time home buyer analysis where the first time home buyer is like, Hey, should I buy now or should I wait six months? Well, I mean, according to Steve, if you plug these numbers into the total cost analysis, you know, waiting six months to a year, um, is going to be even more costly than they realize. So a um, couple asks for everybody in the community. If you do um, either create a video that was inspired by this conversation or you create a rent versus own or a move up analysis or something that was inspired from what you just learned from this conversation, this video, share your total cost analysis link down below. This will be in our Facebook group. Hope you check it out again. You may have gotten this video on LinkedIn. You may have gotten it in some other channel, but go into Mortgage Coach Productivity Mastermind and, and make sure you play it forward. Also, Steve, you know, comes into this community because he wants to create impact and value. So, so please make sure you like it, share it. And Steve, if you were to give anybody direction so they can be part of your community and follow you, uh, what link should they go to? Just, you know, I want to make sure we're bringing as many mortgage coaches into your community as possible. Where should they go? We, we put a daily blog, Monday through Friday, actually. Monday through Friday is a written blog, and on and Fridays we have an infographic. It's all free. Uh, they can go to keepingcurrentmatters.com, keepingcurrentmatters.com forward slash blog. Keep, if they just type in Google Keeping Current Matters blog, um, they're going to come to it. And every single day they can get some input as to what we think is happening in the market right at that moment in time. I love it. Well, you're such a gift to the industry. Steve, thank you for taking time to come into the community and answer a question that came up and deliver a lot of value. I'm grateful, brother. It was an honor, David. Truly an honor. All right. Take care. Have a great day. Same here, David.